I'm just after creating a new div tag, div section with an ID equal to wrapper. And like I said before, that is just a container to hold everything together in the center of my web page. I'm now going to start working on my nav bar. So I've got eight different slices, I think, or seven different slices of different images that once they're put side by side beside each other up at the top of the page will act as my navigation bar that people will be able to click on. So because they're all part of one particular section of my web page, it would be a good idea to actually put them in a div section all of its own. And so I'm going to insert another div and I'm going to put an ID attribute on it equal to navbar. So I'm going to get in here in my design view and I'm going to take away this dummy text that Dreamweaver had put in uh, saying something like content, put your content here. And where my cursor is there, I want to insert another div section. So on my insert panel, I'm going to go and insert div tag again. And again, it's saying I want to put it in at insertion point, which is fine. And the ID that I want to put on this is navbar. Now, it doesn't really matter what you call this, but obviously call it something appropriate and keep it consistent. So wherever you refer to this ID, you always refer to it as navbar, spelt in the same way. No spaces, keep the cases the same so that you'll be able to spot it from a long way away uh, what it is and what it's doing. So that's fine. I'm going to click OK on that. And again, if I look in at my code view, I can see, yes, there is my div section that I'm just after inserting with an ID attribute equal to navbar. And I can see then I've got dummy text in there as well. Content for ID navbar goes here. Fine. That then is inside this div section here on the outside. The wrapper div section. So I've got the wrapper div section on the outside, and inside that I've got a navbar ID section. Okay, now I'm going to start inserting some of the images that I have for my navigation bar that I got from Photoshop. So I, I'm going to get in here in my design view, and again, I'm going to take away that dummy text, and I'm going to uh, start inserting images. So my images are down here in my files panel. In my images folder, if it's not expanded out, you can just click on it to show all the different files in that folder. And then the first image in my setup, if I can find it somewhere, here it is. I want to insert that image. So to insert that image, I want to go up in here to the insert panel and move down until I see images. I'm going to click on image there. And I'm going to find that image that I just saw. So this is the first image of my navbar. I'm going to click on choose and it's asking me for alternate text. Now in some cases alternate text isn't really needed and this is one of those rare cases just because this is at the end of my nav bar. It's not actually anything in particular. It doesn't say anything on it. It is really just the end of the nav bar just so I can get that curved effect on it. So just for this one time I'm not going to put an alternate text there. So I'm going to click OK and that should insert my image. And so I can see it. There it is. That's fine. So I'm going to insert another image beside that. So go back over to the insert panel, click on image, and I'm going to find my home image. And we're going to click on choose. And here I am going to put in the alternate text because this is the home link. This is the hyperlink to the home page. So home link, that's fine. I'll click OK there. That should go in beside it. I'll go insert another image. There we go. Click on tour. Choose. And this is a tour link, or at least it will be. It's not hyperlinked yet, but it will be. Click OK. That goes in there. Image. Next one along is uh, music. 
and music link is the uh, alt text that I'll put in there and click on image and gallery click choose and gallery link is the text I'll put in there and everything is going very very smoothly it won't always be the case that that will happen but just because of the way that I've designed this particular navigation bar it is going to just happen reasonably easily click on contact choose alternate text is contact link click OK and finally the last image is just the end of my nav bar I think so I just have a small image there just to give me that curved effect at the end of the navigation bar again because this image doesn't do anything it doesn't really show anything I'm not going to put alternate text on that I'm going to click OK OK and that's my navigation bar in there and uh, let's take a look at how that looks in the browser so I'm going to preview that in Chrome and so that should open up in my browser and I can see the navigation bar there it's looking quite well like uh, we expected that wrapper is holding the whole website at the moment including the navbar div section right in the middle of the screen and what happens if I resize this window well I can see that whole wrapper section is going to move into the middle it's going to stay in the middle and it's just the two sides the two margins at the edge that are designated as being auto and width they are adapting to the screen size good So in the next tutorial, I think I'm going to highlight each of those images and put hyperlinks on those images pointing to the appropriate pages.